To put it into perspective, it's like Logan Sargent in the car right now scoring a win. It's just, no. It's not Nick DeVries, he's not really the goat of anything after his Formula 1 performance. I've had enough of all of these shit drivers in Formula 1. Logan Sargent can't finish a race to save his life or score a point. And then you have Lance Stroll, and that's just its own subject. So today, let's talk about the best driver or best drivers from every racing category, or at least the main racing categories, because I'm not going to go down to like the seven-year-olds of karting or the MX-5 Cup, because let's be like, no one genuinely really cares or watches any of those things. If you disagree with any of my takes, then put them down in the comments. But remember, this is all done for a joke and a laugh, and I hope you enjoy it. Also, whilst you're down in the comments, um, subscribe and like. I don't know why you wouldn't. I always say this, but just, just, just do it. And I hope you enjoy the video. Enjoy. I think it's best to start in a familiar place of Formula One. And honestly, there's a couple drivers that can be called the goats of Formula One. So let me just throw a couple of names out there. Of course, there's Schumacher, there's gonna be Prost, Senna, Alonso, maybe Raikkonen, Vettel, Verstappen, Hamilton. A decent amount. I think they're the, the main competitors for the, the one true goat. But of course, there's different eras in Formula One. Formula One's been around for, for quite a while. Of course, there's Nicky Lauda as well. But, but back then, they were racing against plumbers, electricians. It wasn't, you know, the competition wasn't as high as it is today. That's too easy! So for that reason, I'm gonna you know, look past Prost, Senna, maybe even Schumacher a bit. Because genuinely, I think on like just raw talent, it's between Hamilton, Verstappen, and Alonso, it's one of those three, in my opinion. Hamilton, of course, a seven-time world champion, won 103 races, 104 pole positions. You get like, he's him. He's genuinely him. And then you have Verstappen, the youngling, who's already, well, basically a four-time world champion, a three-time world champion on paper. But after this season, I have no doubt in my mind that he's going to win every race. And that's going to be, what, a 50? Eight. He's going to have a shit ton of wins after this season and another world championship. So that's a four, basically a four-time world champion. And then you have Alonso, someone, a two-time world champion, but he's made so many bad career moves in his career. But him being in his mid-60s at the moment and he's still putting up a fight. And a, like genuinely still probably one of the fastest on the grid is saying something, getting into a new car and absolutely dominating Pretty much everyone on the grid except for Verstappen, you know, speaks levels. But I think at the moment how it stands, I think it'd be unfair for me not to pick Hamilton as the greatest Formula 1 driver of all time. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Maybe in a couple years it might be Verstappen, or it probably will be Verstappen if his trajectory just keeps on exponentially growing. And maybe if Alonso had a couple more world champions and a couple more wins. I do, I really do feel bad for like Raikkonen, Alonso, Vettel. But you know, the, that's just how it is. And next up, we're going to talk about Formula 2. And this might be kind of weird because Formula 2, you know, the drivers change every, every, literally every year. It's a junior category. But I think the best season ever in Formula 2 has to be Charles's in 2017. The grid was very stacked as most Formula 2 seasons are. So hard. And it wasn't just because, you know, he beat the, the field by an absurd amount of points. No, it was just, it's clear just pace on track and just sheer dominance. He was unlucky here and there, but there's a couple examples we can really pinpoint this out. He was literally a beast. In his first ever sprint race in Bahrain, he starts sixth, pretty respectable, but then a couple laps later, he's leading by eight seconds. But because of all of his struggles, or not struggles, but him pushing the tires, he has to make a pit stop. He pits and then he came, comes out 14th. Guess what? In the last couple laps, he manages to pass everyone again and wins the race with flying colours. And just not, it's not just one instance that that has happened. In Spa, he was like seven tenths clear off the whole field in quality, and usually that's not replicable in the race at all. But for Charles, it, it wasn't because he was like a second faster than everyone else. And he won the race by miles. Nah, I'm gonna do my own thing. Unfortunately, he was disqualified just like he was in Texas. Quite unfortunate. But yeah, still his pace on track was so fast that... What? What? Of course, we can also put... And yet again, Lewis Hamilton into the mix. George Russell, his or his grid was very stacked, but I'm still gonna go with Charles Leclerc. Some people were kind of mad that I didn't include NASCAR properly in one of my other videos, but this time, let's do it for real. The best NASCAR driver of all time. And there's a couple we could throw into the mix. There's actually a few. The King. You think you're the king? I'm the king. Jeff Gordon. Dale Earnhardt. But I think, I think it's pretty obvious that it's Jimmy Johnson. Like, very obvious. Of course, this is biased because of the whole modern era. It's more competitive. And he's driving in the modern era whilst 
all of the others that I just named were um, a bit older. He's a seven time world champion and won five championships in a row, which in NASCAR is literally like unheard of. To put it into perspective, it's like Logan Sargent in the car right now scoring a win. It's just, no. He's a two time Daytona 500 winner and has 83 wins in just under 700 starts, which gives him like a 12.1 win percentage, which is very, like up there in NASCAR, like very up there. Of course, we all know that Jeff Gordon has more wins than Johnson, but I, genuinely, I don't think anyone comes close to, to Johnson at all. To make the Americans even more prouder than they already are, because we all love America, don't we? We love America! Let's talk about IndyCar, and I only think there's, there's two drivers who even come close to the GOAT status, or they are the GOATs. But it's between Mario Andretti and AJ Foyt. That's it. Between those two. And I think it's, oh, kind of clearly, it's AJ Foyt. Mario Andretti, a four-time world champion with 52 wins, which puts him second in the list of most wins in IndyCar ever. We all, everyone knows his name, Andretti. He, they wanted to join Formula One. Everyone knows who he is. Very dominant driver at the time, raced in IndyCar for like four decades, but only managed to win the Indy 500 once, which gave him the, the unfortunate name of the Andretti curse. But looking past Andretti, let's talk about AJ Foyt. I think genuinely the greatest driver of IndyCar ever. He's a seven time world champion, just like Hamilton and Schumacher, and he's won 67 races, which is a lot. And he's won the Indy 500 four times, which is also a lot four times as many as Andretti. And Andretti is Andretti. Yet again, he showed clear dominance in his time period, which was a long time, like a very long time ago, but he still showed clear dominance and no one in recent times or just ever has ever been close to him, ever. So AJ, you're the goat of IndyCar. Also, sorry Andretti. Sorry. Formula E up next, and um, I think there's really only one clear GOAT of Formula E. And no, it's not Nick de Vries. It's not Nick de Vries. He's not really the GOAT of anything after his Formula 1 performance. But I think it's Jev, the only two-time Formula E world champion ever in history. And in the 2017 and 18 season, he won it by a margin of 51 points, which is the second highest or second most in history ever. Very, very dominant season. He scored four wins, four pole positions, and six podiums that season. And his dominance didn't just stop there, because as I said, he won the next season as well, only two-time world champion. But he won three races that season, and since then, he hasn't won a championship since. But he's the only two-time world champion, and I think that's just, it says a lot. No one's ever gotten more wins in a single season than him, and, you know, he's just the best, or was the best in his prime. He has 11 wins in total, which puts him second of all time. And he's been racing since the start of the, the start of the series, which I guess wasn't too long ago in like 2013, 14. So I guess there's not really many drivers who can be really called the GOAT, GOATs, you know? But I'm gonna stick with Jeff. Jeff is, yeah, Jeff. Now MotoGP might not race on four wheels, but I think it still deserves to be in this video because it's a great sport to watch. And I think it's, the GOAT status is only between four dry or four riders, should I say. Marquez, Dewan, Rossi, and Agostini. And that's literally it. Mick Dewan, the father of Jack Dewan, who's currently the reserve driver of Alpine, and in hope, and he wants to get into Formula One, and I really hope he does, because I want to see him in Formula One. Anyway, Mick Dewan, he's a five-time world champion, consecutive five-time world champion, which just clearly states his dominance, and he was just a beast. Back then, of course. He might have been very good at motor racing, but he was that's like the only thing he was good at. He crashed after retiring from MotoGP. He crashed in an F1 test and he also, Riley was also a disaster. It was awful. So he should have stuck to MotoGP. It's good that he found the sport because he was a five time world champion and that just shows how good he really was. Mark Marquez up next is also a contender for the GOAT status, but I don't think he's there yet to get it. He's a six time world champion and always racing in the modern era. When he arrived at the sport, it was like a Verstappen, you know, he had such a good driving style that everyone had to change and copy his. It was very unique and very, very fast. That's why he's a six time world champion. He arrived in MotoGP in 2013 and won the 2013 and 2014 season back to back. And he was just a, a rookie and not a rookie, but you know. And now he's in a team with his brother and they're racing in the same team. So that's all cool and fancy, but I don't think he deserves the GOAT status just yet. Agostini up next and he's um, very old. He raced in the 60s and 70s. So yet again, his eight time world championshipness 
was against plumbers and electricians and things like that. So, you know, it was, pre it was pretty easy, let's be real. It was like, talking about the GOAT status in Formula 1, no, no one really talks about the people in the 50s and the 60s. They're all irrelevant because that was just a long time ago. Same with this. He might be still up there, but I just nowhere near Valentino Rossi. And I think even if you don't like MotoGP, everyone's heard of this guy's name. Seven time world champion and just, just sheer dominance. That's really all I have to say. It's just, he's clearly the GOAT like any, by a, a short stretch, but he's still the GOAT. And that's just, it isn't gonna change for a while, let's be real. Rally cars up next, and this, this is something I haven't really dabbled in a lot in videos, but let's talk about Rally, WRC, who is genuinely the GOAT, and it's it's between a couple, yet again, Colin McRae, Sebastian Loeb, Ogier, Sainz, and I think that's really it. Colin McRae, a one-time world champion, but he really was one of the fastest at his time. He had an unfortunate passing, but looking past that, he was very unfortunate to only be a one-time world champion because he was runner-up three times. Three. He was genuinely one of the fastest out there, and um, everyone knows who he is. Carlos Sainz Sr. also has to be on this list, a two-time world champion, and yet again, everyone knows who he is. He was that popular back when he was racing in like 80s, 90s. He was incredible back then, but um, I mean, he still is now. He's dabbling with Audi and like the Arab Emirates or whatever. He's still doing his own thing, and I guess his talent has been passed down to his son, maybe um, lacking slightly, but Carlos is still a good driver. Even though he's been booting out of Ferrari, he's still a good driver. But him racing in the 80s and 90s, um, that was some time ago, so I guess, you know, recency biased is obviously gonna be here. And, you know, the drivers weren't as polished as they are now. And the two Sebastians who are, I think, up there, or they are up there, one and two maybe. Yeah, they're different breeds of drivers. Different breeds. Sebastian Auger has to be talked about. He's an eight-time world, eight, Yes, eight. We were just talking about Sainz, a two-time world champion, and now we're talking about OJ. Eight-time world champion. Eight. How many times am I going to say eight-time world champion? He's an eight-time world champion in three different cars, meaning it's not just the car that was good, it was him. His raw talent and uh, adaptability in every car. It was insane. It was like a Raikkonen. You know, Raikkonen adapted to literally every car he was driving. He could extract everything until he was in his like late 30s where he started to slow down. But why isn't an eight-time world champion at the top of the list, or the GOAT of a WRC or Rally? Or there's another Sebastian, Sebastian Loeb, nine-time world champion. He has 80 wins and nine consecutive world championships from 2004 and 2012. He has a 65% podium rate and like a 43% win rate, which is unheard of. Like, Verstappen has just an under 30% win rate, and that's F1. I, I'm speechless, and that's I'm just going to leave it there. I'm just, Loeb is the GOAT. And he will be for a while. And lastly, something that you probably never expected me to put on this video, but I love drifting and all of that scene. So let's talk about Formula Drift. Yeah, Formula Drift. Not a racing series. You're not meant to go, you know, the fastest around the track, but it's about chasing and leading. It's all very cool to watch. And I think there's, it's only between two drivers. And no, no, not Chelsea Denofa, not Adam LZ. He's, um, He's a race winner, and that's good. We love to see that. But it's between Forsberg and James Dean, of course. Forsberg, I think, even if you're not into drifting, you probably have heard his name. You know of him, you know who he is. Three-time world champion, like 17 wins in Formula Drift, which is insane. And he's like the old veteran. He's like a Schumacher. Every, like, he's him, or he was him back in the day. But he, I don't think he's anywhere near as, as James Dean's scale level. James Dean, a three-time Formula Drift world champion. And that might be, you know, same amount of skill you know but james dean was so unbeatable he got so bored of formula drift that he went over to or back to europe to win like three or four more drifter masters in europe championships he got so bored of formula drift he was that dominant and he's still just winning to this day in different countries different series he just keeps on getting bored and bored of them he was in formula drift last year with rtr with denofa and Adam Z. he didn't win because he just didn't but He's winning all over. He won in like Oman this year in 2024. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like and subscribe. If you don't agree with some of my takes, put them down in the comments. But uh, all done for a joke and a laugh, so cry about it. Anyway, hope you enjoyed and peace.